welcome to Fill the House Life Skills Series where we're here talking about food. And specifically today, we're going to be talking about buying food. And you're saying, I know how to buy food. I walk into the grocery store, I get the food, and I buy it. I know, it is pretty simple. But I'm gonna tell you five tips today on how to best approach buying food so that you can use your money wisely. When you use your money wisely, means you're gonna have more money to go towards your debt, to go towards all of the different bills that you have, as well as using it to serve other people. So when you are actually using these tips, you're gonna be so much better off. And these five tips I've learned over the years, and I'm still learning them. I'd love to hear if you've actually come up with your own food buying tips yourself. Tell me about that in the, in the comment boxes below. But the first tip I have for you today is about cut up food. You go in the grocery store and you have on your grocery list you need to buy some carrots and you see the baby carrots versus the big carrots and you're like baby carrots, big carrots. You always go with the baby carrots because they're simple, they're easy, they're easy to eat. But let me tell you something. If you actually look at the label of the baby carrots versus the big carrots, you're going to notice something. If you divide the the big carrots, the, the ounces, by the price and do the same with the baby carrots. I would bet you that 95% of the time, the big carrots are going to be cheaper. Now, you will have to take the time to cut them up and prepare them versus what you would have to do for the baby carrots. But right now, and most of the time in our, in our life, we have more time than we have money. And it's always better to just take that extra little bit of time to cut up the carrots. And you're saying, but I'm busy, I don't have any extra time. But look at my meal prep video and check out why it's actually really important to do your own meal prep. It's gonna save you a lot of time and money. And you'll find out why in that video, And check, so check that out. The second idea I have for you is shredded cheese versus block cheese versus sliced cheese. Now, we love cheese in this household, so cheese is always something that we're going to have in our refrigerator, but we've found ways in which to actually buy it in the cheapest manner possible. And that's, again, we're going to be looking at the price. So we're using just an estimate here. I don't quite remember what the price was, but this is some sliced cheese, and it's, we're gonna guess that it was $2.49 for the package. Now, when you're looking at the cheese, look at the sliced cheese versus the block cheese. And I have a little example for you here. So the sliced cheese was, we're gonna say 249, and it was 7.5 ounces. So that, the price divided by the ounces equals 33 cents per ounce. Now the block of cheese is typically a little bit more expensive, but just stay with me for a minute. It's 379, but it's 12 ounces. So if you divide that 379 by 12, it actually equals 32 cents per ounce. So the block of cheese is cheaper than the sliced cheese. Now again, you're gonna have to take a little extra time to either shred it up or slice it up for your sandwiches. But again, you have more time than you have money. It also, it's a bonding experience. If you live with roommates, if you have a husband or a wife, do these things together. Do your meal prep together, do your, your kitchen items together, and it's gonna be a lot more fun than if you just buy this sliced cheese. And then you get to make lots of funny jokes in your kitchen. If you know what I mean, give me a thumbs up. The third idea I have for you today is sale versus off brand. So you go in the grocery store and you're in the chip aisle. I know, I'm often in the chip aisle. I love me some chips. And you see the chips that are on sale, or maybe you have a coupon. Good job. So you have the, the chips and they're $2.79 and your coupon is for 50 cents off. So $2.79 minus 50 equals $2.29. You're like, great, I'm saving 50 cents. But take a moment, look, a look, look around and look, especially look at the off-brand chips. The off-brand typically are around $2 or $1.99. And you're gonna see that there's a 30 cents difference here that you're going to save. This is a great savings for you. 30 cents may not seem like a lot, but if you get into this practice of constantly looking at the sale versus the off-brand, you're gonna save yourself so much money. And this will be a great tip for you to save you money as you go about the food buying process. The fourth idea I have for you is, is it better to bulk? Let me show you something. Ooh. <clears throat> this is my weightlifting exercises. This is about 25 pounds, actually it's about 20 pounds now because I've used about five pounds or a little bit more 
of flour. Now, I am a baker. I love baking. I make all of our own bread and our bagels and all sorts of things. So buying this 25 pounds of flour is better for me. But is it better for you? Now, this 25 pounds of flour is about $16. So for me, if I equal that out and see how much it is per pound, it's better for me to buy in bulk. But are you going to be using all of this flour? If you're not a baker or if you just don't have the time to do the baking, make sure you're actually going to get through all of this flour before you start buying in bulk because it will go rancid. If it goes rancid, you have to throw it away so you're wasting money. So always make sure if you're going to buy in bulk, you're actually going to use all of it before it goes bad. The other tip on this for buying in bulk is a lot of times the larger containers are not cheaper. Either the smaller container may be on sale or maybe you have a coupon for that smaller container. Always, again, use this little formula to find out whether the size of the larger item divided by the number of ounces is actually cheaper than the smaller size. So use this formula and I'm gonna put it down in the description box below so that you can, can look at it and save it on your phone so you can use it whenever you're at the store. So again, it's the the price of the item divided by the ounces will equal how much it is per ounce. So always check, always check how much something is by the ounce. The last idea I have for you is something I also talked about in our five top tips for food, and check that out. It's a good summary of all of these different ideas. Um, but that's checking coupon sites. So there's several different things that are available to you. There's Cartwheel for Target, or there's Iboda, or there's coupons.com. Aboda is a great site where you can actually go on. There's, uh, it's basically electronic coupons. And then when you get home, you scan the item, you scan your receipt, and it's actually going to put money into your Aboda account. And you can cash that in for uh, gift cards or for cash via PayPal. Now, Cartwheel is basically just coupons that you can use at, at the store, at Target. And also check Kroger or Giant or whatever local grocery store app that you may have, and they often will have online coupons. So before you go to the store, when you're looking at your grocery list, after you've made your meal plan, check out that video, you're going to check out these sites. Collect all of your coupons, see which things are on sale, and make sure you use those. We have saved so much money over the years on just making sure we take the time to look at these apps. And you're thinking, but I don't have the time, again, it takes maybe two minutes to do a quick search, use the search options, quickly look through, and you'll get to be really good at it. You'll get to be a pro, I promise. So those are my five tips for you today on buying food. Do you have any others that you would add? Are there things that you have learned? Or maybe you have some additional questions on how to actually do this. Put those in the comments below and we'll have a good exchange of ideas so that we can share and learn from each other. Again, these are life skills for you to help you best use the resources that God has given you so that you can either pay off that debt as quickly as possible, or you can bless others, or you can do both at the same time. Blessing others and paying off debt is such a great combination. But come back soon and we will have some more great conversations together here at Build a House.